Hello everyone, welcome to our Let's Play series of Sorcery. This is Colonel RPG as usual, and I'm very happy that you chose to join me today down here in a, well, it's essentially a crypt. Uh, if you missed last episode, we got ourselves into a seemingly abandoned house, but this thing, it had a, a, a snake. I thought it was going to be a spider. Fortunately, it was a snake. I prefer the snake. Um, I, do, I do like snakes. I do like spiders as well, but not so much in when they touch me. And Anyway, um, yeah, we're in sort of a crypt that was hidden behind a uh, fireplace, and we f cast a couple of spells that really, really worked and uh, opened a passageway to our left. Let's enter the passageway, because we know that it's a safe passage, or I think it is. You peer through the secret passage, but can make out nothing but darkness beyond. You will have to go inside to find out what you have discovered. Yep, let's go. Oh, we're still over here. Well, let's go. Sleeping through the narrow opening, you find yourself a slightly wider space. The walls are cool stone and there are no windows, but the room is not dark. In one corner, an idol stands on a uh, small shrine, lit by two candles with, which burn with thin, cold flames. This place reeks of death and decay. The shrine is covered in thin, blood-soaked strips of cloth. Let's look at the, at the cloth. The bandages are each an arm span long and as deep as your thumb. Each is blooded in two places, spaced a few fingers width apart. There are 30 or 40 such bandages here, running down from the shrine like streamers. Something, Someone was injured for a long time. Let's search the bandages. It's not going to have anything terrible in there, I don't think. You see through the pile of blood, its cloth strips quickly. Something gleams from within the pile, and you uncover a silver badge. It is the badge of a noble of Kare. Look at that! Take the badge, hell yeah! The badge is solid silver and probably valuable. You place it carefully into your pack. The, the glance behind you, suddenly terrified that the secret door... You glance behind you, suddenly terrified that the secret door might swing shut and leave you trapped in this place. No, this is an exit. Let's look at the shrine. The shrine is poor and cheap, unlike everything else in this house. It seems to have been hastily built out of uneven stones and a plank of wood. The small statue of a fat god that sits on it uh, has been has been molded from humble clay. You are starting to get the jitters down here. Uh, I don't I don't fear this. I'm going to die, but I'm gonna die. It must be some local deity. At the base of the statue is the name of Korga. Above its above his head is a plaque, a plaque with sh a short inscription, and on his face are painted four red dots. Let's read the inscription. The inscription is scroll is scrawled as though in the hand of a child. You have to squint to read it. Give me back my eyes. Oh. Yeah, you guys can read in between the lines right there. Look at the dots. The dots on the idol seem to have been daubed, daubed? I don't know that word, with a fingertip. They are perhaps directions on how to worship the god, but there is no indication of what to do, or in what order, only the places. Both eyes, the third eye in his forehead, and his mouth. So both eyes, the third eye in the forehead, and his mouth. That would be like the, the sign of, I don't know the name in English, but we got like a, it's a crucifix sort of thing. There is nothing more to be seen in this terrible place. You slip back out of the small room, out of the fireplace, and into the hallway. Give me back my eyes. Yeah. Yeah. You can uh, easily read into what happened there and the two sets of bandages and all that. A noble was kept in here. Compared to the little room you have just left, a dark, empty hallway seems welcoming and friendly, but not so much that you plan to linger. No, I want to go upstairs, although upstairs is probably going to be really, really bad and deadly. See what happens. You place your foot on the first step of the stairwell and suddenly it begins to move. Is it alive? Some kind of thin, flat beast? Or is it a trap? Uh... I don't know. I don't know. I can make a prey. We can die. We can die here. One of these will kill us, the other one will hurt us, and the other one will see us safely out. Let's jump back. You jump back in alarm. The shadow seems the shadows seems to uh, churn, and the step, uh, the steps of the staircase creak and groan. Though you cannot make out what is happening. After a minute or so, the noise stops, and the hallway is still once more. Let's try again. More boldly, you put your foot on the stair once more. Again, it begins to move with a gentle lifting motion. Perhaps it is not a beast. Perhaps it is some kind of mechanism. Okay, let's stay still and try to balance. 
you stop dead still as the stair moves underneath you and try to balance. It is not easy. You are definitely rising into the air and curving around the bends in the staircase as you go. Oh, it's like a standard stair lift then. Or something like that. As you reach the top, you see a corridor appearing, almost close enough to jump for. Let's jump. Damn it. I hit my head or something. The, up the upstairs corridor is close enough to grab. You jump for it. The speed of the moving stair is enough that you misjudge your landing a little, but not seriously. You very slightly twist your ankle as you land. Very slightly twist my ankle. Okay. Let's go. Let's go to the top of the stairs. You look around. You are on an upstairs landing with doors on either side. And we have nobody living here, I wouldn't think. So we have a room over this way. Uh, and we have a sort of a... Uh, a library. It says right there. Duh. Let's go to the library because I like those. This is a library in darkness. At the far end, a pair of eyes stare back at you. Give me back my eyes. Could it be? I doubt it, but let's look at the eyes. You step forward boldly, your own eyes fixed on those across the room from you. They do not blink. They do not even move as you approach. That is nobody. There's nobody there. There's nobody there. Stare it out. You stop and try to stare the creature out. It is agonizing work. A minute goes by and still neither of you have blinked. Let's keep staring. You keep staring until your eyes begin to ache. The eyes do not react. Then you see why. They are the eyes of a large portrait that hangs over the far wall in shadow, but uh, for a dim sunbeam falling through a gap in the roof above. Okay, yeah, I knew there were not. I don't know why I knew that. I can probably... I will tell you... No, that's not what I want. I will tell you why I knew there were not eyes. So, the library in darkness. At the far end, a pair of eyes stare back at you. I, at this point, I knew there were not eyes. The reason why is twofold. Basically, it's interesting, I, it, it, it's interesting to me that the game was so forward in saying that the eyes were... Just a pair of eyes staring back at, uh, back at me. It, it, the game was very clearly descriptive of what, what, of what is happening. Uh, <clears throat> in a way that doesn't really... I, th I always thought it was going to be like a statue or something, not a painting. But I guess the game is being truthful here. It, it didn't have to be truthful, but the game was being truthful. But at the same time deceptive because it was so sparse in information. So that kind of set my alarm off right there. But also because we found a couple of eyes b below... Actually, we didn't, and that was... About, but my recollection of them... I mean, why did I think that we had met eyes before? I think we found something over there that re recalled an eye, and that we have the light. And uh, there's like a theme, a sort of theme. No, it was outside! Yes, 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 yeah, okay, so yeah. My Basically, I thought that in con we wouldn't get two eyes that would kill us in a, in, a, in a row. So that was my reasoning right there. Let's go upstairs. Well, actually, let's go to the painting, not upstairs. I thought we were going upstairs. I heard something to my left, though. Was it my... It might have been my, my headphones or some whatever, headset. The painting is of a proud and stern-looking man dressed in loose leather armor with a serpent emblemed stitched uh, a along the length of one arm. The painting fills the entire walls of the room and must be twice the height of the man who posed for the likeness. Let's look behind the painting. You raise one corner of the frame from the wall and peer up behind it, but it is too dark to see if there is anything hidden there. Uh, the eyes of the painting seem to follow you as you move. Let's look at the man. What is up with this guy? You step back a little to regard the, main, the man in the picture. The most striking thing about him are his eyes, cold and cruel. They seem to gleam with cunning and the will to survive. They are the eyes of a man who would harm you if you suited him. Oh, if it suited him, knowing full well what it was he did. What it was he did. Otherwise, he stands tall and proud, with one hand on the hilt of a sword and the other wielding a tiny dagger. Everything about him reeks of power and, a th and of threat. The picture must be of a man that lived in this house. For anyone else, it sh would surely cast too long a shadow to live beneath. So... The game is telling me something here. But there is something upstairs. I think I'm... I think I'm something bad is gonna happen. I'm gonna need to cast a spell or something. Let's leave the painting. You grab the base of the painting between outstretched hands, then half the frame up and half the hook that holds it to the wall. There is a moment when you think that, it, that you have it under control, then you have that, that then you are holding the true weight of a painting and begin to stagger backwards. 
I can't cast a, anything. I can't do anything right now. Let's try to balance it. I'm not gonna drop it. Okay, you backpedal across the room, trying to keep your balance. The painting threatens to topple at any moment. If you can just get turned around, you'll be able to lean the painting against the wall. Uh, so, to step backwards and to the right. You step backwards and to the right, and suddenly your foot is in, in space. You have stepped backwards out of the room and into the stairwell. The next moment you are falling, the painting tumbling down on top of you. You hit the lower landing with your head across the canvas, dazed but still in one piece. Holy crap! Please don't do that! That was really bad. I can't pray, but I got healing supplies here. Uh, let's, let's... I guess I'm gonna need that. Let's go ahead and do that. Okay. Uh, I can't do anything here. She has shame. Where do I need to go? I need to get up. Okay. Let's go back upstairs. Damn it. Let's, let's do that. Okay. You, you fight your way out of the painting like it was a spider web and get back to your feet. The way upstairs is now firmly blocked. The frame of the painting fills the stairway and the image itself is in tatters. A chill breeze drifts from the stairwell. There does not seem to be anything more here to be discovered. Damn it! Damn it all! Really bad, really, really bad. Man, plus six health right there. This house is now home to only ghosts. You hurry back out of the door into the sunshine of the front garden. Well, it's all an adventure. That's that's how you should play these games. It's an adventure. It's not supposed to go well all the time. It's the going badly that's really that forms your adventure. Outside the house, the sun is shining brightly. It is almost the hottest hour of the day. Wasn't it already afternoon? We haven't slept yet. Let's go with the back and see what happens here. And get attacked by a dog. Oh. You follow the path around the back of the building. The rear is simply boarded up and is simply boarded up and secure. There is a low stone wall, partially ruined, through which the path continues, turning into a track that runs away through the fields. Okay, let's follow the fields. Because I'm not going there. Uh, you follow the track, clambering over a fence into a wide stretch of grazing land. A rocky bluff on the left-hand side throws the path into shadow. On the top of this rise is the bulky the bulk of Kare. Squatting like a giant toad, the fields themselves are on the lower plane. Mm-hmm. So I could keep going over there, or I could go back? Huh. But I don't want to keep going. Let's go back. Yeah, I've been there already. Let's go back. Okay, so here we are. The game is... Uh, the fields of carry will be slow to cross, and no doubt filled with snakes and spiders. You turn... Yeah. You turn back and return to the street outside of the house. There is nothing more to do here. Yeah, there is nothing more to do here. Although I could look at the fountains. Let's do that. We haven't done that yet. Oh! A fountain by the door is still bubbling. Cupping your hands, you drink a deep mouthful and feel much better. It is time to be moving on. Okay, so maybe things are gonna be better. Because at 16 stamina, that's pretty good. Let's continue. You head through the front yard of the ruined house and out onto the main street. The horse at the post whinnies and shakes its mane. What is it doing there, though? You approach the horse. It snorts nervously wary of her presence. You might be able to calm it or even talk to it with a correct spell. I don't think I can cast the correct spell, because there is one that lets us talk to creatures, but... I don't think I can cast it, because it requires a, a reagent or something. So I can cast a fireball. And hopefully that, that'll let, let me eat the horse, which probably is not going to happen. Let's not do that. We got Sus. Senses danger. And we have Sap. That causes depression. Why would I want that? Uh, then we have Yap. Or Yaz. Causes invisibility. Mm. What else? No, up there. And we have Yap. Talk with animals. I need a green-haired wig. No, not going to do that. Uh, I think I Let's talk to the horse and see what happens You try a few words in the common tongue And then a few whispered in the more gentle language Of your boyhood in Chawberry Wood The animal listens with its ears cocked Giving you a strange distant look But of course it does It is a horse Still it appears calmer in your presence now Perhaps you have made a friend Let's see if I can steal it Keeping your eyes fixed on the beasts, you slip the reins from around the itching post and hold them firmly. Then in one movement, you pull sharply, bringing it round so you can jump onto its back. Hopefully, you will be you will have better luck than with that cart you stole outside Piritanti. Yes, hopefully. The horse, friendly or not, is having none of it. It whinnies loudly and rears up into the air. And then, with you barely settled on its back, it bowls at terrific speed along the road, heading back the way you came. Um, let's 
try to stop it. The, it's what I did the other time. I tried to stop the cart and I got hurt. Okay. You tug sharply on the reins, trying to bring the horse under your control, but the beast is strong and forceful of nature, and it tosses and it tosses head wildly and only gallops farther faster. It is all you can do to stay on its back. I'm gonna wait for it to calm down then. You cling, cling on as best you can, trying to calm the beast that it stampedes along the outer streets of Kare. You plunge madly through a market, past a shrine and down, down a wide ruined street. As you think you are doomed to crash into a building, something makes the horse startle and it leaps, throwing you to the ground. It lands awkwardly, you land awkwardly, the horse whinnies and races away. Where the hell am I? You are on a wide track, just on the outskirts of a fair. You limp towards the gathered crowd. People and creatures sprawl across the path, and several tents have been erected. Their poles joined together by the lines of colorful flags. It is some sort of festival. Should have known better. I should have known better. I'm gonna keep up. This is gonna be a thing. Every time I see something like this in every one of these part of the parts of this game, I'm gonna go for it. I think they're gonna give me the game is gonna punish me, but this is a warning for you if you're gonna play the game. And I highly suggest you do because it's a lot of fun. Uh, so you use your way into the edge of the gathered crowd. It looks, uh, it all looks good, spirited, and fun. And with so many people here, perhaps you will pick up some useful information. Let's listen. You mill through the crowd, keeping your ears open for anything interesting, but most people in the center of the field are arguing over where to go next, or lamenting how many gold pieces they have spent. You might do better to have a look, a uh, closer look at something. Okay, so I can... I can only do one thing here, I think. Yep, let's go ahead. So the horse... How the hell did he take me up here? Holy crap, the horse... Maybe he took me... I don't know. I don't I, I don't know. The hell, I don't even know. I have no idea what the horse... How the horse got me here, but, well... We have explored. We have explored. You walk to the north end of the fairground midway. The fair continues from here on a road leads uh, way uphill. And a road leads way uphill. Uh, the place is full of bluster and noise. Huge numbers of people crowd around the boxing ring. And more clap their hands and stamp as they watch a group of dancers. Oh, I know what this is. I know what this is. So middle of the midway. That's the musicians right there. Uh, and that's the bare knuckle fighting. Let's go ahead and do that. You cross the fairground to, the, to a wrestling ring. A ruffian inside is announcing the current challenge. People of Kare, are you ready for a fight? In the white corner, we have our challenger, Anvar the Barbarian. And they look very, very pretty. Look at them. That guy looks like he's right out of Kiss or something. Uh, the crowd cheers and whoops. Uh, so let's ask someone about the fight. You attract the attention of a nearby, a nearby member of the crowd. Tell me, you ask, what are the rules of, of the fighting? Ah, no rules, giggles the man in reply. That's what makes it so entertaining. No weapons, another man puts in. That's the only rule. And in the back, in the black corner, the brawling champion of Kare, the one that they call Skull Splitter, the Ogre Kako of Daduli. Well, and who can challenge? You ask. The man shrugs. Anyone crazy enough to want to get their head smashed in? Challenger, are you ready? Demands the ruffian. Anvar nods and beats his chest. Let's look over Skull Splitter because it's, gonna, it's probably going to be the guy to win this. Hopefully, anyway. Because if the other one wins him, uh, wins against him, that's going to be a problem. Because I'm going to fight him. I'm going to go on in. It's, I'm here for. I'm here for a fight. The ogre looks at uh, as thick as any ogre you might meet, but he is made of solid muscle, his arms and legs like the twisted bark of trees. On the other platform, the ruffian turns to the ogre. Champion, are you ready? The beast appears not to understand the question, but scratches his armpits. The ruffian nods. Uh, I'm gonna place a bet here. Let's look at the Anvar, though. Let's see. Anvar is about half as tall as you again. Uh, with sheets of muscle on his arms and legs, but he is probably lighter than the ogre, which will mean he has less momentum. This should be quite a close match. The ruffian steps into the center of the ring and drops his arms. Let the fight begin! The crowd roars, ready to f for the fight. Barbarian in the white corner growls and beats his chest. The ogre raises his fist into the air and shakes them. Okay, so I think the barbarian is gonna win. Uh, but I can't... I can't really bet. I don't. I didn't really want to bet because I got enough money. I think. Let's shout for the barbarian. You shout, finish him to the barbarian who bellows with anger. The ogre roars with rage and powers forward against the barbarian, landing a mighty blow. Now the ogre looks on good form, but then the barbarian comes back with an unexpected thump. Yeah, let's do this thing. You hold her at the barbarian, but it's not clear that it does any good. Finally, it is over. With a simple throw, Skull Splitter the Ogre throws Anvar the Barbarian clear out the ring. The crowd goes wild. And, uh, 
Is it, shouldn't it be goals wild? Anyway, inside the ring, the master of the fight raises the ogre's fist in the air. Who challenges our champion? The prize is 10 gold pieces. Uh, so let's learn from this. 10 gold pieces, good. Um, let's see. So let's learn from this. Um, so the ogre... That means he has less momentum. This should be quite a close match. The ogre roars with rage, powers forward against the barbarian, landing a mighty blow. And then, a single throw. I think I know how this is gonna go. Let's take up the challenge here. I challenge him, you cry. All eyes turn to look at you. The fight master beams. We have a stranger taking the challenge, he declares. Let him through. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. The, sh the crowd goes wild. It's, it's, it's befitting. It's befitting. The crowd parts and you are helped up into the ring. Under his breath, the fight master outlines the rules. A fair fight, no magic. Oh, come on. I, I was hoping for magic. And pound your opponent until they can't stand. Ready? He asks. Let's look over the ogre. You risk a glance at your opponent. He's a hulking brute like all ogres. A creature who could almost be made out of stone. In the back corner then, the ruffian announces, is Skull Splitter. In the white corner, the ruffian turns to you and hisses, What should I call you? The stranger. The stranger is nice. The stranger! The ruffian pulls a black face. It's not very exciting, he says, but all right. The crowd, he be, uh, to the crowd, he bellows. In the white corner today, fresh from the who knows where, please welcome to the ring the stranger himself. And when and then throws you a side a sidelong glance before he scapper, scarpers from the ring. Oh, he has a weapon? Maybe that's just... Okay. The crowd begin to furiously place bets. You can hear them discussing your relative merits. He looks feeble. Looks like a manic maniac to me. You ready your fists. Okay. Let's block. Oh, come on! Oh, he's easy. The ogre raises its fist in the air and makes a roaring noise that brings a similar response from the crowd. You drop down into a ready crouch. Knees bent, arms wide, ready to react. He hits out uh, with a lazy swing of its colossal fist. Clearly, it thinks you are no serious threat. Let's go with a powerful one. Oh, freaking hell! Why? Why? Reading a forceful blow, you hurtle forward. The ogre blocks your blow. It beats its huge muscle arms and roars. So it's going for... I think it's going for a... S Holy crap! Holy crap! You try a heavy punch. But its attack is strong and devastating. You are thrown out of the floor. The crowd gasps and shears. Let's block. Uh, that was a bad move. You drop in the defensive crouch. The ogre tries a weak punch, but you escape its creep. Oh, come on. I'm doing so badly here. Preparing a heavy swing, you charge for your op opponent. The ogre drops into a defensive crouch, moving with more speed than you'd expect. Um, that's what he did right now. Let's go with it. Oh, no, 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 no. I'm going to repeat this. I am so going to repeat this. I... Just, yeah. Yeah. I'm gonna, this is going to be, be the first time. We are losing way too much health. We're probably going to be able to overpower him, but... I'm going to... Yeah. We're... Actually, I should probably just die. Can I die? Let's look at the death screen here, guys. Let's look at the death screen. So he's going to go... Yeah, I should be learning, but I'm not going to be as bad as that. I'm not going to be as safe scummy as that. Let's, let's win this fight fair and square. I mean, as fair and square as you can get. Oh, come on. I didn't want to hit him. Kill me already, little guy. Oh, seriously. Come on, guy. Just murder me already. There we go. Oh, no. Didn't kill me. Kill me now. Kill me now. Eh, there we go. Okay. Okay. Death screen. Show me. Try again. Oh, okay. Good, 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 good. Are you ready? Your fists. Okay. First things first. Let's go. Uh, I don't know what he's gonna do. I don't think... Uh, let's go with the halfway attack. Yeah, okay. That's good. That's okay. It's okay. One point of damage. The ogre raises its fist in the air and makes a roaring noise that brings a similar response from the crowd. The bell rings and you charge forward, roaring and bellowing. It drops back and covers its body, clearly waiting for you to wear yourself out. It beats its huge muscles, muscle, muscle chest, chest and roars. So this is not a feint. This is a proper attack. Right there. Perfect. Perfect. Yeah, you drop in a defensive crouch. Your suspicion is well-founded. A moment later, the ogre charges forward with uh, all its body weight. It knocks you back a short way. So I'm gonna go with a power attack right now. Readying a forceful blow, you hurdle forward. The ogre blocks your blow. I think it's gonna go... I'm gonna go with a power attack. It can't be as powerful. Holy crap! 
Holy crap, you psychic grand preparing a heavy swing. You charge for your opponent. The ogre drops into a defensive crouch, moving with more speed than you'd expect. Um, so he's gonna go for a feint here, but I can't really do much. I'm gonna have to block. Oh, no, he didn't go for a feint. Good, 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 good. You drop back defensively. The ogre pounds at you with heavy fists, but you dodge the force of the blow. By the way, I think before I could have easily won. I, I can easily win if I just spam attacks here. Um, or I should be able to easily win. Uh, but I didn't want to do that. That's why I, I died. So that doesn't count as me dying. It counts as safe scumming, which is, well, it's not really... It's not my gravest offense. I hope you guys understand. I, re I really don't want to drop too much health. Because we were really dropping too much health. So you drop back defensively. The ogre pounds at you with heavy fists. But you dodge the force of the blow. So it's probably going to go for a defensive one right here. Because I think I'm beginning to see a... For a defense right there. I think I'm beginning to see a, a, a like a, a pattern here. You chase the ogre with a passing blow. The ogre deflects your fists. The ogre stumbles. Suddenly crashing into the ropes at the side of the ring. A gasp goes up from the crowd. And I should press on my advantage I think. Even though it didn't actually go well. You lunge forward again, mustering a lumberjack blow. You lunge at the ogre. The ogre reacts defensively. The crowd are spurring the ogre on the ogre. Smash his skulls, skull splitter. Someone calls. He's gonna go for a power attack. Because I think what he's doing... Yeah, what he's doing is basically he recovers. He never attacks slowly. He recovers and then he attacks powerfully. You drop your weight and watch your uh, the ogre closely. You escape most of a thumping... Uh, most of a thumping fist. The ogre is holding back. Someone in the crowd is shouting the voice, Take out his knees! There we go. There we go. He didn't defend that time around. You swing for monster for the monster with a light blow, hoping to make it waste its energy defending. The ogre turns away, as though not seeing the blow will stop it landing. The ogre howls with rage as it stumbles and hits the mat. For a moment, you even think it might stay down, but then slowly, like a crumbling cliff, it picks itself to its feet and once more... Oh, oh, once more, yeah. It is briefly distracted by scratching. Okay, so it's gonna defend, or actually it didn't defend at all. And there we go! You strike again, and that was a, a strong slugging. Uh, it wasn't perfect, or good, but yeah. It was it, three stamina loss for ten gold, that's good. You strike again, readying a forceful swing. You hurl forward, the hoger staggers back, gasping its stupid eyes, blinking in surprise, summoning this last, last ounce of strength in your arms. You raise your hands, linked in a fist, and bring them down. Knocking the ogre out cold. That was good. That was good. You stagger from the ring. The crowd cheering for you and collect your winnings. The fair, the fair spreads out all around you. A collection of booths and rings and tents and stalls. Hawkers announce the various attractions at the top of their lungs. The general atmosphere is cheerful. With just a hint of violence. And we got 26 gold. Hopefully we're going to find somewhere where we can get a bunch of money. But we're going to go down there and then over there. And decide whether or not we're gonna go in there but for right now i'm Colonel rpg and this has been sorcery i really hope you've enjoyed it and if you did go ahead and leave a comment like the video but above all thank you so much for watching and i hope i'll see you next episode bye bye